Today I'm pleased to welcome Perry Stoneman, Executive Vice President and Head of Capgemini's Global Utilities Sector, to talk about some of the predictions that he has for the energy industry in the year ahead. Welcome, Perry. Thank you. So according to the recent blog you published on your predictions for 2018, you talk about the rise of Rentex. Can, can you explain what Rentex are and give us a view of what's going to happen? Sure. So Rentex are technology companies that have either been established or are startups that decide to get into the business of renewable energy generation. So we know most of these Rentex, uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple. Um, we also know some of the startups, Solar City and uh, Sun Power, for example, in California, Quadran in France are examples of startups. Um, what's happening and what are they going to do? Well, the low cost renewable energy or the decline in the cost of renewable energy is making it quite affordable to be able to implement these solar or wind farms. So if you're a Google or an Amazon and you're going to build a new data center, uh, and many of these data centers are built where land is relatively cheap, um, you have the option now of installing renewable energy generation adjacent to that plant. Uh, so you're offsetting some of the energy you might have bought from the traditional utilities by generating it yourself and being a prosumer. In the case of the startups, uh, many of these startups are starting organically, again, taking advantage, sometimes smaller, doing rooftop solar implementations. Um, and the future for these startups is interesting. I, I don't know for sure where they're going to go, but it does seem that there is a trend that once they reach the magical one gigawatt of generation, they become an acquisition target. Now, you also predict an increasing move towards self-powering communities. What's driving this? Well, as in the uh, Rentex, the cheap, the energy is cheap, it's affordable. So not only are corporations getting in the game, but communities are starting to see the possibility of imp implementing shared uh, assets or generation facilities within the community. We're seeing two types of communities form. One is a physical community where it's around a city or a town or a campus and decisions are being made by the mayors or the city councillors or the facility owner of the campus to implement renewable energy again because it can be re reasonably affordable and it's green. Uh, the second are virtual communities that we're seeing form, peer-to-peer -peer groups. Uh, as in the case of Sonnen uh, Energy or Sonnen Community in Germany, where citizens with rooftop solar and battery storage uh, can join a community, a formal community called Sonnen Community, and they can trade their energy or share their energy assets with, with each other on a peer-to-peer -peer network. And how should utilities perceive this? Is this a good thing for them? That's well, clearly a threat. Uh, you know, any of these generation facilities that are owned by somebody else uh, actually represents a decline in revenue or sales uh, for the utility. So the utility needs to look at it and recognize these trends are occurring and make conscious decisions as to whether they're going to participate in the marketplace. So for instance, a, a solar field or a wind farm being implemented for one of the tech giants, maybe the utility should be offering to build it, be the EPC company and operate it for the next 20 years. Uh, I'm sure Google and Amazon, those other companies, don't really have in their primary business objectives to be owners and operators of these, these assets necessarily in the long term. Now, another prediction was related to energy storage. You expect 2018 to be the year that batteries prove themselves and their potential. Why this year? Because there's significant projects happening right now in the world. So battery technologies are being uh, implemented at utility scale uh, more now than they were in the past. There's a couple of big ones that I'm aware of that I like to track and watch. One is South Australia where they had a large power outage related to the uh, variable nature of the renewable energy in South Australia. They have high percentage renewable and that can impact the grid adversely. So Australia will install 100 megawatts of capacity, battery capacity uh, to make the grid harder and, and take the excess energy when the renewables are strong and uh, drain the battery when the renewables aren't pu push pushing enough energy. The other area I think that's interesting to watch will be the storm ravaged Caribbean. So Puerto Rico and some of the other islands need to rebuild their energy infrastructure. And we're going to see a higher percentage of renewable energy going into that rebuild, and we're going to see battery technology. So once you start making these projects real, I think that's when you hit the tipping point about uh, proving technologies, and this is the year I believe batteries will prove themselves. Okay. And in your blog, you had also mentioned Elon Musk. Why him in particular that you've called him out? He's very outspoken. 
right? And he's a very strong advocate for battery technology. So how do you talk about battery technology and not possibly say something about him? You know, one example is how uh, he responded to that power outage I mentioned in, in South Australia. The, in response to the uh, South Australia CEO, Mike uh, Cannon Brooks question about how do I stand this back up? Mike Cannon Brooks asked Elon Musk, how serious are you uh, about implementing the, the 100 megawatts of, of battery technology. And Musk responded, and I quote, Tesla will get the system installed and working in 100 days from contract signing or it's free. Wow. That kind of went a little bit viral inside of the energy world. It probably imagine. didn't, yeah, it didn't probably catch the attention of some other industries, but to, to us, it was a project to watch. Sure. Now, moving on to um, your prediction around artificial intelligence and RPA and how they're going to help to restore consumers' faith in utilities. Do you really believe this is going to happen? Absolutely. Uh, the utilities have started to uh, implement these technologies already, and we've just got too many statistics and facts that show it is working. For instance, the utility industry itself, uh, there's a consumer expectation gap of 71% relative to under, other industries. So utility industry has the worst customer experience relative to expectation of all the industries. Um, but we do know that three quarters of utilities have implemented AI and already see a 10% improvement in sales. So for those that have implemented AI, you're getting a sales improvement. Uh, we're also seeing that 73% believe that the AI along with RPA or robotic process automation is going to be able to change your customer experience. And 65% and feel that it will either um, it not just improve customer experience, but reduce churn. So the numbers and the statistics are behind the prediction. Now, you've also stated that 2018 is going to be the year that utilities transformation programs start to pay off. What's changing within utilities that will enable these programs to accelerate? The role of the CDO. So most utilities have hired and established the role of CDO and their mandate is to figure out how to use digital technologies to improve uh, performance, to take costs out and, and, and transform their operations. Once you have a senior executive with that role, um, it's probably something the board of directors are aware of and a program and agenda is going to be built around it. We've seen that uh, most DSOs in Europe, in a meeting yesterday with a, a, a DNO of one of the largest uh, distributor operators in, in France, um, I was told that the association of, of CDOs is alive and well. So not only are they uh, working within their organization, they're also forming a peer-to-peer -peer network to understand and, and help each other with the programs. So they know transformation is needed and uh, with an executive in charge, I'm quite confident that that transi transition will as uh, accelerate. Well, it sounds like an exciting year ahead. Thanks for sharing your insights with us today, Perry. Thank you.